Hello and welcome to Roundtable, number 22 of Dualistic Unity. I am my own limitation. My idea of what I think I am, my idea of what I think I'm capable of, is the only thing getting in the way of just fucking finding out for myself. Like, there's, there's nothing else telling me with any degree of certainty that I can or can't at least give something a shot. And it's just the story that that cuts me off from the, the ability to try new things, be something else besides the habitual story that I've told myself for so many years. I'm excited to see so many people sharing in the joy of just letting go and discovering that the entire time that they've been trying to get to this place where they could be themselves, they've always been in that place here and now. It's just allowing themselves the space to discover what it means to be yourself, to figure out that you don't have to figure it out, that it's not something you need to understand in order to do. So with all that said, I hope you enjoy this live stream that is Dualistic Unity Roundtable number 22. And here we are for a roundtable episode. I am very excited about this. We don't do these often enough, in my opinion. But on the other hand, it's good for people to be able to get out into their lives, try some stuff out, feel a little unbalanced, come back to a moment of clarity, and then they can come back here and share their tales of adventure, as it were. So here we are for a roundtable episode. I'm going to pass it over to Andrew here, and I'm going to do something quickly, and then we're going to kick it off. Awesome. Yeah, excited for, for this. For those who are tuning in uh, live or after the fact, if, if you ever do want to be on one of these, you just have to join Patreon. Anyone on Tier 2 or Tier 3 can join these every two weeks at, twos, at Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday and chat, be on a podcast, be on a public podcast that gets listened to by, by a bunch of people, a bunch of cool people. So it's a, it's a fun opportunity to be able to connect with each other and share thoughts and you know we we get to do it in the groups but it's always a blast to to have it on a full episode a public episode like this so i appreciate everyone who is who is here and excited to see where this conversation goes um if anyone has anything they'd like to bring up feel free a story a thought and insight otherwise i can get into some stuff that i was getting into at the end of our instagram jay Good to see you, man. Hey, that that worked. Raise the hand. Good to see you too. How's everybody doing today? Doing great. Good. Good. I I wanted to talk about the experience that I had this morning. I've been going through a time of no insights, or at least nothing that I could generally tell. Like nothing kind of original was coming up, you know. So I'm like, oh, I'm just kind of dead, you know. But not dead, but just not really coming up with anything new, and that's okay, you know. I was in a kind of a settling uh, moment. And you kind of get into that moment. And I got to a point where I'm kind of sort of tired of settling or tired of even wanting to have the moment be anything any different than what it is or have even wanting to have any insight at all was like kind of a thing that came to me from that. And as soon as I let that go, like they it wasn't like immediate, but they just started flooding. I'm like vacuuming the house. And I'm like, you know what? And a lot of the insights that I had were related to the episode that y'all had recently with Daisy, which was amazing, by the way. That was a phenomenal episode. And a lot of the insights were actually related to that, even though I hadn't watched the episode yet. So I watched that episode this afternoon. I'm like, holy shit. Like, holy shit. You know, all the and it's stuff that we've been like you all have been talking about for a long time since I've been listening. Basically, it's things that I've heard over and over and over again. But until you can really like put the puzzle pieces together, sometimes it's kind of like cursory. You know, it's kind of like there like, yeah, yeah, I get it. You know, I understand. But I didn't really, you know, and it's not until that moment where I like really got it that I was like, holy shit. You know, like um, a big one that I had today was just the responsibility uh, of the moment, basically that <clears throat> anything that I can think of, of about myself is a judgment, whether it's good or bad or anywhere in between, any kind of a thought at all that I have about myself is automatically in a judgment state. And I can't fully live in the moment truly if I'm 
judging myself in any kind of a way. And Andrew, you say this a lot, like you had a video recently where you're like, do you, I don't even know what's going on. And that was kind of like the gist of the video. Like, I don't know what's going on. And that's really the realization that I come to is that I don't ever like have to know what's going on. You know, I can just kind of just be, and I don't have to have a judgment and the discernment from when it's a judgment or when it's just a realization of something happening is like the key to unlocking the right now. You know what I mean? Um, because then I won't be putting up clouds or veils or I won't be, you know, clouding my present moment with the opinions of what I think right now. And so that realization right there can translate to just about anything, just about anything, just, um, and it's not even just the awareness versus um, the observer, observer, you know, observer of the thing observed kind of relationship. It's, it seems to be a little bit like more than that even it's not like just being observant of the thoughts it's kind of like observant of the the observation of the thought you know what i mean it's like wow the, the shit just really uh and it's not even that complicated really but um just to be able to relax into the moment really and it was just kind of like that realization that i just can you know it's like the uh and like almost gave myself the okay to just fucking relax you know it's pretty cool so that was a neat moment um so i just want to bring that up to start the day it was good stuff. Fantastic way to start the day, in my opinion, because, you know, you can't know what's going on because you, you start to say what's going on. It's like that's all presumptive based on this this trajectory then like you can't know what's going on ever because that would that would mean that, you know, what's to come, what's next, you know, that what happened is what you thought happened that your singular perspective of the situation that you were in, that you're in now, that you're going to is objectively true and that you know the next thing that's going to happen because in order to know what's going on, it has to be relative to something, right? And without that ability to have the relativity, you can't. So it's not even that we, we s surrender to, to not knowing what's going on. It's the recognition that you can't know what's going on without making a massive assumption that not only you know what's happening, but that your individual perspective is the ultimate truth, that that the way that you see things is correct. You know, you can never know those things in regards to, you know, the insights and, and the de desire for insights. I know you, you were able to, you know, surrender that, but even the, the idea that a lack of insights means something about you isn't even close to that because the ultimate insight is is you and the idea that you're you're garnering more insight or, or getting to more insight or, or that you should be having more insight necessitates a, a conceptual idea that's having more insights that's that's achieving or understanding more things and there, there has to be a conceptual idea in order for there to be something that is gaining anything or is understanding anything more and more clearly or completely. And it's that illusion that you're something getting anything that's the ultimate insight to be had. And so even, even the idea of having insights as opposed to just I don't know, be like, I was going to say being insights, but I don't even know if that's necessarily it recognizing something here and now or letting go of the idea that there is anything else that you're turning into any degree of a journey that you're becoming something other than just what you are right now, like this being it, like this being the all and everything of you right here and, and right now. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting because <laughs> insights can become insights are really interesting in, in that what they're really doing is there's they're, well, it's exactly what the word is saying It's it's providing another layer of sight, another layer of recognition of what it is that you're dealing with. And with that, you're, you're, behavior changes, your decisions change, the way you perceive yourself in the world changes. And 
it's so very interesting and tempting to to look for the insights not recognizing that it means you are like you are leaving a part of yourself behind right and and so while at first the insights are, are super important especially if you find yourself in the pit you're just like I, i'm good leaving that person behind <laughs> I mean, in which case you know dig at it for sure but after a certain point it is about accepting where you are and making the most of it because you've already got the knack of changing you can almost not stop seeing insights after a certain point even just relaxing and going, I don't really need to see insights. You're like, oh my God, that's a good insight. And all of a sudden you're back on the road again. So it actually becomes a skill in itself to stop looking for that insight, to actually take the lesson that the insight's always showing you, which is just to arrive, just to be where you are, right? And there's that silence. And in that silence, that's when you really start to feel yourself rubbing up against uncertainty, right? And so it's a loop. You know, you do that, you rub up against uncertainty, you're, you have an insight, then you're like, okay, then you calm down, you are where you are, you rub up against uncertainty, <laughs> and you have an insight. And it just becomes this process, but it's really important to enjoy those periods of, of quiet. Enjoy those moments when you're just doing what you're doing, when you're just being what you are. You know, this is why I enjoy doing dishes. I love doing dishes by hand because it's just something that I, I can do. I can get absorbed in each and every plate I can get absorbed in whether or not I'm rushing or, or anything like all of that. It's just a complete experience in itself. And I'm not looking for the deeper insight. It's being embodied right, in each and every thing that I do during that. And so it's interesting. We, we have this hesitation and, and rightfully so um, to let go of the, the inner narration to let go of the inner dialogue that we're having with ourselves because we are all the time right and that inner in that inner dialogue is reflected in our quote unquote outer dialogue with everyone else but it really is just an ongoing conversation with ourselves about our existence and that's all we're ever doing and we don't have to we can just exist we can let the dialogue go kind of like just you know letting an old friend go home for a while so you can take a rest and come back and resume the conversation tomorrow. Yeah, because the thing keeping you from that is the idea that you know anything about right now. Like the things that you're, you know, in your room, the the face someone makes, the thing someone says, there's a clinging to a certainty behind that that you know what is happening right now and when you when you recognize that you don't you know the thing the weight whatever it is because most people have something at every given moment some weight that, you're, that they're holding on to it's just your assumption that you're correct and when you're willing to let go of that like maybe i'm not what if i'm not what if that's not the truth and it can be maybe more difficult to do for things that you've held on to for a very long time, but it always comes back to that. And it's that uncertainty that is the lid for the insights to arise. Like, I don't know what's happening. I don't know how people perceive me. I don't know how I'm doing. I don't know where my value lies. I have no idea what I am conceptually. And you're willing to just sit in that. You're like, yeah. Yeah. I don't. And then you try and come up with something. Ah, but I know this. Like, yeah, no, you, you still don't know that. No, I know, but I know this. No, I still, yeah, still don't know that. And then you're willing to sit in that where it's like, fuck, what do I do? <laughs> like, what do I, I have always held on to something. There's always been something tethering me to this thing, but without that and, and knowing that you can't know, like it, it shifts your experience enough that the insights start to arise from that. It's like it shakes them up, but it's the willingness to sit in that spot where you don't know. And you know that you can't know that they are able to arise through that. And that's the only spot that they do arise. Because as long as you're certain about something, it, it, you can't have new, fresh insights. It's, it's the willingness to be uncertain especially about the things that you believe to be true about, about yourself. Yeah, it was actually, I saw Amanda had her hand raised, but I just want to finish my, oh, well, one last point. 
uh, since you mentioned that, while I was going through some of those insights earlier, I was kind of thinking about change because it is always constant change. And also in the episode that y'all had with Daisy, a lot of it was uh, facing fear, you know, a lot of it and um, or facing uncomfortability even or even having a judgment of, of what we're supposed to be feeling anyways, you know, whatever task or situation we're walking into that feeling is going to change and it may be a good feeling it may not be it might be an uncomfortable feeling but either way the identification with any feeling to do with it doesn't change the task at hand so without any kind of an identification with a a preference for a feeling then we can go ahead and do the thing without having and just be ourself you know and that's where it all can, kind of came together in the moment this morning, I'm sure it like it is cyclical and it's always changed anyways. But today it really fucking made sense. It's like, man, it's just always constant change. So anything that I really want to do, because I've been a little bit stuck here at times, I have a lot of things I would like to do to get started. But the fear has held me back. It might be procrastination. I might call it some other label. It might be I got busy. I might have to work or I'm tired or I could put any kind of a label on it. But it really is just procrastination due to that I'm not ready to face that feeling yet. And I wasn't, you know, but I don't have, once that feeling is faced, I don't even have to identify with it. You know, it's just a matter of just going through. Uh, and one last thing I was thinking about change and I'm thinking about even something as simple as a rock. I can hold a rock in my hand. I can look at that rock and think I know everything about that rock, but all the time I'm looking at that rock, there's a chemical composition change going on inside of that. Like there's degradation, you know, the forces of nature cause everything to degrade. So from the time that I look at that rock to the time I stop looking at that rock, it's actually a different rock. And the whole time it's, I've been looking at it, that rock has been going through change. I never know what that rock ever, ever is ever. And how could I ever know what I am or what direction I'm going to go in, you know? Kind of like Ray mentioned earlier, where, where like I was shooting for the stars and I don't even know how to how to just enjoy my day yet, you know. So it is really just relaxing into it. But thanks for letting me share, guys. Yeah, no, I'm grateful for you sharing because it really is. And I, I I do it more than anybody I know, man. I love it. It's just so much fun to soar and see how much we're capable of. And at the same token, it's recognizing that it, it really does enhance our appreciation of when we're not doing that. Just the, just the capacity to understand that we can, that we're not as limited as we think. It changes our day-to-day -day experience. It changes our moment-to-moment -moment experience all the time. And it's just knowing that you can really be an insightful motherfucker if you want to be, right? And it's, it's nice to know. Because, I mean, how often do we tell ourselves that we're not capable of clarity or we're not capable of understanding or we're not capable of, you know, doing more with our life or if you want to call it more or getting more aligned, I guess you could say. It's all bullshit. You can do anything. It's just a matter of time and attention, right? So knowing that changes how much you need to get shit done, right? Suddenly you can sit on that beach and not think to yourself, but I'm not working on self-improvement. Recognizing that that's, how, that's why you're on the beach. It's because you can appreciate it now. Enjoy that. You've worked that hard to get there, right? The, the self-improvement will come in, in challenging moments. Enjoy the ones that aren't. Amanda. Sorry, I was just uh, putting a, a small joke in the chat. Um, I, you know, I say my jokes really for me. You guys all just don't, you just, you just get to relish in the comedic wonder that I swim in. Um, no, but I really love, I love the rant, Jay. And I definitely watched the episode with uh, Daisy, incredible. Um, I actually, I watched it twice. In, in the first 24 hours because there's so many juicy nuggets and it's just like reading a book again like there's no way i'm gonna get all the nuggets the first time around so you know we got to go round two round three and go into it again um but i love this conversation about insights and about like the application so what came to mind was an analogy about the insights being like a juicy bite and usually sometimes i'll worry about when am i going to have my next juicy bite and i'm not taking taking into consideration that the absorption of the nutrients is is just as if not more important than the bite to get to the nutrients to get to the application and, and but yet I, I think about the juicy bites you know is it a nutritious bite is it a tasty bite it has how long has it been since the last bite and so i'm thinking of all about these bites and and forgetting that the whole point of taking the bite was to absorb the lesson 
to absorb the nutrients that are coming from said inside or said bite. And, and I love the, the analogy that was given, uh, you know, walking through the fire. Um, and there's so many different types of fire. So Jay, when you were talking like, oh, the fire could be fear. And I was like, oh, it could be, you know, resistance. It could be paranoia. It could be uh, insecurities. It can be anxiety. It can be any of that because just like there are different types of fire, different flames, there's blue flames and white flames and red flames. And, you know, so there's different types of fire. There's going to be different, different versions of, of the fire that you walk through. And, and, but it's so easy to not want to walk through it when we're constantly being sold fire extinguishers. Everywhere you look, it's like, oh, no, 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 the fire's dangerous. And it's like, um, what isn't dangerous? What is it? Because the last time I checked, there is no, there is no risk-free option. Every option comes with risk. Every option comes with anxiety. There is no getting out of that deal. And so instead of thinking of, of anxiety and fear and resistance as this enemy that has to be vanquished, and, and as much as I love dramatic flair and, you know, I'm on a quest and I, I, I shall vanquish thee and you shall not plague me or my sons. You know, like, I love that. I love the drama. But that's not all there is. It's not that dramatic because it's just a tendency. And so I love the live show that you guys did a couple of days ago where, where you were talking about if we replace disorder with tendency. And, and more so of, of instead of, you know, thinking about it as, as a replacement, just thinking about the fact that I have a tendency to be anxious, that I have a tendency to look for fire extinguishers, that I have a tendency to build an ice sculpture. And the ice sculpture is from the episode with Daisy, where Andrew, you were saying that the ice sculpture is the concept of us. So there's a concept of Amanda and that is my ice sculpture. And I can try to protect it from the flames, but the flames are always going to be there. And the, and the hilarious thing is that I can always make a new ice sculpture, right? But I can't eliminate fire as a factor, but I can always make a new sculpture. But yet I think that I have to protect the sculpture. Like if it's gone, that's it. Because I'm so attached to that sculpture that I can't imagine existing without it. But I was here before, before there was a concept of Amanda, before we got a name, before all of that, there was existence. Because as, as Kathy from the Vancouver retreat, beautifully put existence is existence is existence and you know I felt like a record when I was on the shrooms and I was the center of the record and uh Kathy and um like I'm forgetting uh she was like the music she was like the notes of the music and so as she's like walking around and he's saying existence is existence because I was just like man this feels like a loop and it was just so funny because it's like when isn't there a loop you know, when isn't there a rant, Jay? When isn't there a reason to be like, woe is me? But it's it's okay to fall off the surfing board. It's okay to get burnt a little bit because the fire isn't the enemy. Growth isn't the enemy and neither are the tendencies. It's just things to notice, things we could change because all options are always on the table, regardless of whichever one I focus on for however long I focus on it. It doesn't eliminate an option from being available and it's always available and I can always embrace it if I just notice that I haven't picked it yet and decide to pick it. And so it's just, uh, it's hilariously frustrating. And I'll end it on that note. Yeah, because tendency, even in that, in that way, it has this sort of neutral undertone. Like disorder has this incredibly negative undertone, right? Whereas tendency is just kind of like, that's something that you do. And so to your point, Amanda, it's not even, it's so much harder to, to fight a tendency, but it's, you're able to look at it now from a perspective where it's like, that's something I do pretty often. I'm experiencing some consequences of this. It's not that it means there's something wrong with me. It's just something that you can actually look at instead of something that you fight and, and you try and get rid of, or you, you know, submit to this is just who I am. This is just what I am. This is just it for the rest of my life. This is exactly how I'm going to be forever. Like there is that, I was going to say, there is that tendency towards us seeing disorders as something that are st stuck to us. Like they're stuck to us forever. It's like something that we, we carry with us throughout our entire lives. And it's, it's, this is my lot in life. I have this disorder. It's, chemical imbalance like how fucked is that statement even that it's oh it's it's out of your control something you were born with because if it's something you're born with you can't even 
it's not even worth considering. It's not even worth questioning if it's something that is inherent to you, that's inherent to your story. It's not even worth a, a, a singular, well, what if it's what if it's not? What if I could act a little bit differently? Because then that shakes everything. That shakes the fabric of your entire reality. And so along that line, it makes me wonder with something, you know, we think of disorders in a certain way, but we think of fears in a certain way too. And even my assumption that I have certain fears, are those fears not perpetuated by me continuing to say that I have a certain fear? I have a certain fear of this thing. It's like, do you know that? Like, when is the last time you confirmed that? When is the last time you you faced that and, and were still afraid of it? Or is it just this thing, this narrative, this degree of certainty that you continue to carry with you throughout your life? Like, how many times do we have a certain fear and then it, it comes into our reality? It comes up in an experience and and we're like, oh, yeah, got, got through, you know? Oh, that actually wasn't as scary as I thought. So is it just our our desire to keep it around or my desire to have a fear that keeps them there? Can I actually confirm with any degree of certainty that I have certain fears? And then if I face them and I'm uncomfortable and I'm, I'm going through something with it or, or have a certain experience like involved with experiencing the fear itself, but it, you see that it's just another experience. And so it's not really, uh, do we have fears? Outside of just me continuing to tell myself a story that I have certain fears is we have fear. We have fear. And then that translates into whatever it is we're doing or focused on. But it's the experience of fear, which is really the experience of, of self doubt, right? Of self analysis of measuring yourself up rather than just continuing on. But the experience of fear is always there. It's just that it translates into different experiences. Yeah. Oh, man. Just that. And it, it, as soon as I perceive myself to be something that I can conceptualize, it's like I just translate my fear of not being enough, fear of being incomplete into an experience in which that would play out in which I could confirm it. But it's the same sort of thing that I'm almost trying to to give certainty to like, Oh, it, it can't just be me making assumptions about things. It's gotta be because of something and passing that responsibility off to it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Maddie. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, it just, uh, from this conversation, I'm thinking about how, we always try to overcome our fear as if it's like something that can be overcome, like we can completely diminish it. Fear is always going to be there. And I'm starting to see that fear is like, it's pretty much all the same. Like it's that same feeling no matter what it is. Right. Um, and, uh, just talking about like disorders, um, Lately, I've been watching like some videos on TikTok how there will be uh, autistic or neurodi neurodivergent people talking about um, the things that they go through. And I think that's just a massive assumption that you're special and you go through this and everybody else around you isn't going through the same thing. Like they're just really good at um, masking themselves from it, distracting themselves from it or maybe they haven't even like taken the time to sit with themselves and realize like what is going on. They just haven't had the chance to observe and watch where everything is coming from or um, watch their reactions instead of giving themselves to the time to kind of observe. They just keep um, <laughs> uh, fo like following through with um their emotions and um, they just keep clinging to this reaction because um, it's just been their go-to and it's so familiar. So it's just the thing that they naturally um, do. But I think it's interesting how um, neurodivergent people will talk about neurotypical people as if like they're dumber or like, no, they're just 
they don't know like they're not as aware as we are they're not as sensitive as we are and it's like no this like we are all born the same do you see anybody anybody going through some kind of like different process like there's no other process that we know of so it's ridiculous to think that um yeah one person can be like this and another person can be like that i know that we have there are differences but the way that we just like yeah it's just um it's crazy for them to kind of uh put themselves up on a pedestal like that and think that they have more shit to deal with when it's when we're all going through the shit and i just see how that creates a um like a separation between us when we're i don't even want to say supposed to be coming together but when we can come together um just because we can um because we're all in this together and i mean what good is singling out a group of us and not allowing themselves or not allowing them to be exposed to the topics that you talk about just because you think that they think in a particular way or because you think that this is how they are um when really they just might not have ever been exposed to this kind of thinking or this way of seeing things um like i've never been diagnosed with any kind of like um disorder or anything but when i listen to people talk about um the things that they go through or the things that they experience or how this happens or how that happens i'm like yeah like i totally relate to that like i do this here and there like it's not just you going through this like everyone experiences this on some on on the spectrum you just might be wrapped up in it or had more time to kind of go back and forth than i have um but uh yeah um i don't have much else to say but just wanted to drop that in there yeah that's awesome oh go ahead oh i was just gonna say like that whole whole desire to see someone as something or like neurodivergent versus neurotypical and all of that is just a, a another mechanism of maintaining me of maintaining my perspective of myself like they're all just mechanisms of doing that, like the false certainty that I am what I think I am. They're all just, we're all just experiencing different ways to do that, to maintain that I'm something separate from something else, right? And we do it in, in many, many different ways to make ourselves feel a little bit more certain, not realizing that that's you know, what's maintaining our prison. Yes. Yeah, it's um, something I have been noticing through my gender transition was the, the question about whether or not the gender dysphoria that I was feeling was a result of some sort of biological innate feeling that I am a woman or if, or if it's uh, a consequence of the mentality that I'm invested in. And so that was really interesting to see play out because if if there is bio, like a biology behind it, some chemistry behind it, then I'm kind of locked into this one path. And so there's not very much nuance for decisions I could make because then I'm feeling certain feelings about some type of way about my, some dis discomfort with many different parts of my body and how they don't fit into this idea that I have that of what it needs to fit into. And, you know, it, it's kind of funny how all of those ideas that I have in my head are exactly what is expected of a woman so it's interesting how it's like kind of just aligned like that in my head and so yeah I was just noticing how I, I um, went to see the Barbie movie a few days ago great movie highly recommend um, but yeah it kind of highlighted points about how gender how women face um, feel gender dysphoria based on what is expected of a woman in society how, what that role means and so it's not just trans people and you know people who are undergoing gender transition that feel gender dysphoria but also cisgendered people and <clears throat> i do think that when you're identifying so heavily with you know some characteristics that are opposite to the puberty that you went through then obviously you're gonna have so many more things that you 
feel like you want to change about your body because then it's like the spectrum or the the gap is bigger and so then it feels so the suffering feels so much more intense and so yeah my experience with gender dysphoria, dysphoria has been so interesting because it felt like it was just there and there's nothing I could do about it except hormones and you know like the things that um they recommend the uh, doctors recommend when you have gender dysphoria and what i noticed was that all i was doing was putting like some ice on a huge fucking wound and like it's not really really doing anything except making me feel a little bit better but it's like the wound is still there and it's festering and it's like holy shit dude like maybe, maybe there's some different way to approach this but yeah it was it was just so much so much fucking pain and it was like okay now i need to change my voice so that i feel more comfortable in the bathrooms and locker rooms so now the voice has to change as well and and the face as well doesn't <laughs> do, do the job by today's standards <laughs> and so there's all these expectations of what i need to be and who i need to do who i need to <laughs> who i need to be and it's just so limiting in terms of what you can express and you're fitting into an idea of what you need to be and when you're trying to fit into an idea then then you're not the full spectrum you're not allowing yourself to be yourself and it's and it's you miss out on so much color that you could express when you're not necessarily feeling like you need to go down that one path and so that idea that it is biologically innate and that um it is something that you cannot change like, and that you just have to like get with it like then it is for just part of your experience now and you just have, need to have these surgical and medical interventions is so disempowering because it takes away your ability to realize that you are kind of causing your own suffering by investing in the identity that you need to be perceived in a certain way when you don't. You don't need to be perceived in any way. And the more I've been letting go of any kind of perception of me of what this needs to be perceived, like how this needs to be perceived, it's been so much easier to let go of needing to feel like I need to be perceived as a woman. And so it's interesting because like, a ways into my journey i understood the idea that gender gender identity is an illusion that man and woman is just constructs that we've created and so it's you know it's like I, theoretically the understanding was there but it's not until i realized that the fear can be there and the discomfort can be there and i can still do whatever i want to do because i have that strength that power and that and that discomfort means growth like there's this idea that because there's discomfort then i need like treatments and stuff but or i can just sit in the discomfort and be okay with it and realize it means nothing about me and it never meant anything about me and the only reason i may think that it meant something about me is because of the conditioning and things that i went through that made it feel like i needed to be perceived in a certain way when i never did I just want to say we love you, Jazz. <laughs> Truly, thank you for sharing all of that. It, it, it's really important, and I think it's. I think this is the reason that a lot of people tend to get get upset about children being approached about this conversation because children really just don't. They're already trying to figure out who they are, and somebody comes over and says, "What well, you're not on? You're not comfortable with change? Well, there's something wrong with you." You know, we got a fix for that. And kids just want to be like, yeah, that's great. Like my, my own daughter from time to time, she's like, she's just overwhelmed with being a human being, you know, and as her parent, I'm just like, yeah, that's being a human being. Like, that's what it is. Whereas we tend to have this idea that, you know, if you're anything other than numb, <laughs> then, then something's wrong, right? You're too up or you're too down, you know? And, and it's like, you got to find this middle road and, and, the whole point is to live the whole point is is to go through that spectrum and 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 to grow with each and every decision that you make until one day and i guess this is the gift of age is, is that you, after a while you start to recognize how much fucking time you wasted thinking about shit that didn't fucking matter thinking about people's perspectives that didn't fucking matter that you'll never fucking see again 
right? Like, and, or that we're judging you because of their own shit. And you get to this point where you're like, if I added up all the fucking hours, oh my God. And it just dawns on you. You're just like, oh, that's more than I've watched cartoons. Like, it's just, it really hits you and, and you really start to reprioritize things. And, you know, I say this as, and I don't mean to sound like down or anything, but you start to come to terms with the fact that you're not invincible. Uh, by about the end of your 20s, the early 30s, you start to go, right, this thing's starting to hurt a little. And you start to realize that you will eventually fucking die. And that there's a certain amount of time between then and now. And are you going to give up even one of those fucking moments for some dick who's judging you for their own fucking reasons? Because you'll never get that moment back. You'll never get that moment back. What are you going to do? Are you going to be there at the moment of your death thinking to yourself, well, I'm glad I gave Jim that three minutes. Like, fuck that noise. Like, it, it's living for you. It really is. Because that that's the opportunity you have is to grow, is to change, and to recognize more and more with each step, with each change, that you are change, that you are very good at it, and you are stronger than you could ever possibly imagine. And that's the point of growing. So... It's good to have you here, Jess. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Go ahead. I I think that has been the I think the thing that I've really been enjoying about this realization is that I really can just generate energy for things that I'm doing in the moment for the moment rather than feeling like I need I'm going to be something. And so that has been so awesome because now it feels like I can do all these different things that I've always wanted to do, but felt like I wanted to be a woman who was doing all these things, you know? So it felt like there was always this lack that I felt like if I was dancing then I wanted to be a woman that was dancing, if I were doing anything else or anything like that, it felt like I, until I feel like I'm perceiving myself that way, that it wasn't enough. And Honestly, it's kind of crazy because it was like, it's no wonder that I was feeling so limited. It felt like, it felt like there was a huge weight that I was carrying that I was carrying around, around in every moment that it felt like. And so it's, it's definitely a process that's unfolding, I think where it's like see it let go see it let go see it let go and the more i'm doing it the easier it's becoming and the more i'm doing it the more opportunity i'm seeing for expression in in whatever way in what, what whichever direction and it doesn't have to be anything that i thought in what in whichever direction i thought i would go in because i have no idea where i'm going and it's nice to know that I don't need to have any sort of checkpoints along that journey or any sort of flags where it's like, okay, now I get this surgery at this time and then I'll feel some sort of way that is more fulfilling of the experience that I'm feeling now. Like there's none of that now. Like I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where we go here, but it's nice to know that there's that freedom to explore and to be curious about where that, where that, wherever that is. That's beautiful. And I, I just want to say that, you know, this is something that everybody goes through in their own, in their own way. I think is that figuratively, um, we, we all think that we, we need to be something to enjoy the dance. And really there's nothing better than being able to dance without judging who we are to just dance as ourselves, you know, and we all go through that. So I'm glad you're learning to dance and we all are. Likewise. I appreciate you sharing all of that jazz. I appreciate you period. End of story. But that, that concern of, of being something like if you maintain an idea of what you think you are or what you think you should be it's going to dictate your actions so whether you see yourself as a woman or you see yourself who's good at things you know you see yourself as a woman you have to dance as a woman which is just a conceptual idea you see yourself as someone who's good at stuff and you don't think you're good at dancing you're just not going to dance you're just going to avoid it so we're always handcuffing ourselves. i'm i'm someone who is this and therefore i must always fit that bill no matter what i'm doing 
no matter what I'm, I'm, I'm stepping into, I'm someone who doesn't fail. So therefore, if I go into something where there's the opportunity to fail, I just won't go into it. I just won't do it. I'll just fucking avoid it because I'm not someone who fails. I'm not someone who stumbles. I'm not someone who this. I'm someone who does this. I'm not someone who does this. So therefore, we just we just box ourselves in, box ourselves in, box ourselves in until we're so confined that we barely move. We don't do anything outside of the things that we know we can do. And that's pretty much the process of becoming an adult, right? <laughs> growing up, becoming more and more certain about what I can and can't do until I'm in this tiny little box and never try anything new because I can't, because I'm not someone who fails. Because what would that mean if I'm someone who fails? Someone who fails is less than someone who, who fails isn't enough. So therefore I must avoid anything in which that potential may arise. And so, you know, with things like, gender dysphoria as well. Like everyone goes through it. Everyone's experiencing it. If the, anyone maintains any idea of what the fuck it means to be a man or a woman, they experience gender dysphoria. And the further you see yourself from what you're supposed to be or what you're born as, the more drastic the the things that must be changed. You know, I've, I've used this example before. If I go into a store and don't buy a pink shirt, because I don't think that's the way to be a man, that's that's some degree of an action that I must take in order to avoid. If I see myself as, you know, something else, have a, have a stronger, a, a more of a disparity, there must be more drastic actions taken. But we're always somewhere on that spectrum as long as we're maintaining an idea of what we think it means to be something. And we're coupling that with an idea of ourself. And it's where those line up dictates how much of a, how extreme of an action I must take in order to match that conceptual idea of what I think I am. I'm going to pass this to Amanda in a second, but it just, it just dawned on me that, and we see this all the time, but age dysphoria is something that pretty much everybody suffers through. Cause when you're younger, you want to be older. And when you're older, you want to be younger. It just kind of dawned on me, like that's something that everyone suffers from. And I wonder how long it's going to take before that becomes a fucking thing. <gasps> oh, shit. What did I do? Amanda. Sorry, I was just speaking in oldest English in the in thy chat. You know, somebody was wondering, like, what we're doing. And and I'm just being. um <laughs> I'm using for my own sort. And so I'm just saying things in the chat. Everyone's getting into it. It's like, I raise this thy hand, handeth, you know, and it's like definitely not accurate at all, but it's just to do it just because you fucking can. Um, and I have been absolutely um, much obliged to be jazz. Very, very obliged. I am really appreciating hearing your perspective um, because through no choice of my own, I've kind of been in like the in between, like in the gray area. So I, I, I if people ask, I identify as a cisgendered woman. Um, but when I was growing up, I was constantly called a tomboy. And so because I didn't fit the norm, they told me that I wasn't a, like a, a normal girl. And so I kind of had to like, I didn't stop chasing. I didn't stop running to trees. I didn't stop racing the boys. I didn't stop doing any of the things that classified me as a tomboy, but it was, it was just something that I kind of knew that I didn't fit that mold well. And, and then I got older and I kept hearing like as a teenager, like, oh, you know, you know, I can't, you know, I can't think of you like a regular girl, Amanda, you're like a guy, you're like, and it's, and it was, and it was just because they couldn't process that I was exhibiting masculine tendencies, right? So it's not that I was dressing like a boy. I wasn't talking like a boy. I wasn't actually trying to be a boy. I was just doing things that they associated with boys. And because they associated with boys, it must be that the boys own those traits, own those tendencies. And so if I exhibit them, I was a tomboy. And then it transitioned to, are you sure you're not a lesbian, Amanda? You know, like you, you might just, you might not even know you're in the closet. And I was like, oh shit, really? What do I know? I'm just attracted to boys. You know, <laughs> what, 
what does that mean? Obviously nothing, <laughs> you know, because I exhibit um, assertiveness and boldness and I do it unapologetically. And I did it despite knowing that I didn't fit the mold. It was like, oh, then you must be a man or you must want to be. And so it's been it's been quite interesting that I never I never took their their word. So um, I never thought that I was a lesbian. I never thought that I was a boy in a girl's body. I never thought that anything that they told me was true. I just was doing what I wanted to do because I was having fun. And if anybody hangs out with me, you know that I tend to do what I want. You know, I was during the Vancouver retreat, I was like going into full lizard mode. And what that means, everybody, is that I was finding large rocks and sitting on those rocks and laying on those rocks as a lizard would you know, not caring. And I said it exactly like that. And it was like, oh, this isn't graceful. This isn't feminine. This isn't masculine. This is lizard like motherfuckers. Like we are having a lizard moment and we are going to bask in this sun just because we feel like we can, you know? And so it's been, it's been hilarious to kind of see that you get branded and, and you think you're winning when you get to pick the brand, but it's just as painful. Like, oh, this, oh, this is my label. Like, oh, I'm a tomboy. And so I'm just going to brand myself with this. And that's all I am. And it's like, no, it's just that you exhibit whatever you can and all options are available. So it doesn't matter if you pick something that's described as feminine or masculine or assertive or passive. It's like that just happens to be what you picked. And you can pick anything at any time. And it means nothing about you. And I was thinking about you, Jazz. I was at the airport and I was thinking, I was looking at the bathrooms and I was like, damn, how fun is it that Jazz can like pick both bathrooms? And she could, and it doesn't matter which bathroom you pick, somebody will be bothered. You go into the girl's bathroom and it's like, you can't be here. You go into the guy's bathroom in a dress, you can't be here. <laughs> and it's like, and I was talking with a friend and they were like, and if she's really feeling crazy, she might go to the handicapped bathroom without a wheelchair. <laughs> she might, <laughs> hey, you can't be here. And it's like, says who? You in the fucking bathroom police? You know, like back up. Obviously you have nothing better to do with your time than look at me just walking through doors and using a toilet. Because last time I checked, the toilet doesn't care what ass is on it. It probably just doesn't want any asses on it. But it's, you know, it's not its lucky day. Down the hatch it goes. You know? <laughs> so, you know, it just seems so crazy that we talk about growing pains. And that's literally a saying, growing pains. And yet all I see is avoiding the pain, but still trying to pretend that you're growing. But you can't grow without the growing pains, because that's why we've never called it growing comforts. And so it just seems so funny that you that people want to brand you just because it's easier for them to put you in a box and they just want a permanent label on that box. But it actually they don't know what they're doing and they don't even agree with their labels because I never felt like I was a woman, but I never felt like I was a man trapped in a woman's body. I just always felt like I'm just Amanda. And even now it's just like I'm just I'm just whatever choice I happen to be on. So like uh, we're like a mystery, like a mystery, like, you know, like shaking the magic eight ball. Like, what are we going to get? Try again later. Shit. <laughs> but it just feels fun to ask and not really care about the answer and just to keep it light even when the answer feels heavy or when it feels light and so it's been really inspiring and beautiful to watch you examine the the in-between space that you're in jazz because it feels it feels like I resonate with it to the degree where I don't really feel like I fit into either side but I don't feel like I fit into no side I feel like I could where's the select all option because that's what that's what it feels like we're living Jazz, if you have anything you'd want to follow up that with, otherwise we'll throw it over to Maddie. Yeah, I can go. Um, I find I find it interesting because it felt like when I was coming, when I was ident starting to identify with being a woman, it was it the it feels like the moderations were in part due to wanting to ex express parts of myself that I wasn't able to express when I was identifying with a man. And so there was this idea of what a man can and cannot express. And so, which is obviously arbitrary and nonsensical, but it's like, it's interesting how jumping into the other box then meant that I couldn't <laughs> exhibit characteristics that I was exhibiting before. So it's like now I have to like now it's not even about being myself. It's about fitting into another box. And it did feel like that in some ways. It was due to wanting some like like feeling like feeling afraid of of the consequences of being perceived as a man. You know, there, there's so many different things going on there, but it felt like it was 
the way I would be perceived would get me less hurt if I were a woman. And so it, it felt like a safer choice for me because it felt like the life would hit me less hard if I were. And it's funny, <laughs> given the context of everything, but it, yeah, it, that's how it felt. And so it's the, when you say that um, going to the, <laughs> the male bathroom or the female bathroom, I find that so funny because it's so true. It's like, there's no, there's no option that leaves everyone satisfied with my presence in, in the bathroom. So I have really been appreciating just not caring and just doing whatever, whatever the hell I want. And that has been giving me the freedom to feel like I can do anything that I felt like I didn't have an option to before, like growing a beard. Like that's not an option that I felt like like I loved having a beard before transitioning, and so after identifying with a woman, it felt like oh, it's like I I hated it after, and so it's interesting how that shift occurred as well. But but now it's like fuck yeah, that would be that would be pretty pretty cool, <laughs> and like and <laughs> and including having like I've really been enjoying having long hair because I can do so much so many different different things with it. Um, but it's so nice to have that kind of freedom where whether in behavior or myself up or whatever it's or how I talk as well I've been like learning how to talk and like I was as part of my transition I was learning how to speak in a more feminine voice but there was so so much of that um, learning process was allowing me to look at how, what different things go into a voice as well so there was a lot of appreciation for the fact that the voice we have is just a habitual pattern, just like everything else. And so the vo- the way that we speak is just because that's the muscles we were using growing up. And so that's just how we talk, but it's not, you can create different habits just like with anything else. And so you yeah, have been enjoying the process of like fucking around with my voice as well and just trying different things, going deeper as well, sometimes going higher and just enjoying that process of, being changed in whichever direction it is like there's no there's no direction that I feel like I need to stick in anymore so it's nice when it goes in all directions everywhere well said I'll I'll add something real quick and then throw it to throw it to Maddie I appreciate the, the patience Maddie but the voice changes like I would argue I've I've known to some degree in some way shape or form everyone on this call right now for at least a few months and i would argue that everyone is an entirely different person than they were a few months ago everyone is an entirely different person than they are were at the start of the call people have mentioned you know differences in ray and my flow since episode one especially my voice how i talk like there's been massive shifts in that and yet so everyone's always a different person each and every day, but we maintain this story of what I am or what I think I should be or what I think I'm capable of. And that cuts us off from, from being ourself, but everyone's changing all the time. Like everyone's always a different person and, and you're a different person to everyone that you, you meet. You're a different person to you than you are to, to anyone else. There's so many different iterations of you right now. And it's always always the case but we're always changing whether we see ourselves as changed or not like we are inherently different uh maddie oh you're not coming through maddie I accidentally talked in the chat. <laughs> um, it's all good. Um, Amanda and Jazz, I love everything that you guys are saying. And um, yeah, I feel like there's not much else that I can add that can make whatever you guys have said like already great. But um, when I was growing up, it felt like um, the idea of being a girly girl was presented to me and I was just like, nah, I don't want to be that because look at all the boys. They're playing with all the cool shit over here. Uh, they're all over there. I want to be with them. Um, so I felt like I was a tomboy as well, like just didn't 
was never really interested in doing the whole girly girly thing because I thought that if I was going to be a girly girl, then I would have to adopt the narrative that went along with it. Like I always saw women or females as being like the stay at home mom or like, yeah, she's the one who looks after the house. She's the one who looks after the kids. And I was just like, I don't want to do that. That's like, no, like (laughs) at the time I didn't was like struggling to be around kids my age or not kids my age, just never really liked babies and was like, I don't know how to deal with them. Like, I don't know how to read them. Like it just seemed like too much. Um, But uh, yeah, I just felt like the boys were always getting the attention or like there was more things or opportunities or options for them to do than girls. Like all of the girls just had the really boring, like what seemed jobs like, yeah, you can be a hairdresser. And it's like, what, who the fuck wants to like, play with hair like I play with my friend's hair at school I don't want to do that for the rest of my life and just yeah no that just didn't seem fun and then all of these other like uh you, it just felt like you had to be really smart to get anywhere in life and I felt like I was being treated as a dumb student but it just felt like there wasn't enough time or this the teachers didn't have enough time to give me that attention to kind of sit down with me and um, like have a one-on-one to figure out if I was like on the level of everyone else. But um, uh, as I was growing up, I like kind of resented the fact that I was, had been born a female because I was just like, man, this sucks. Like we have to wear skirts. Like I just want to wear pants. Like, like I have to deal with um, all of these body parts and everything changing and like getting a period. And it's like, why the fuck do I have to go through this? And they don't. Um, There was just so much rage and so much unfairness, like everything when I was growing up, it just seemed to be unfair. And then because um, I have a brother as well and because he's younger, he gets babied a lot. So he, um, kind of like he's always been favored and I've just sort of accepted like, yeah, he's going to be favored and I'm not even going to fight it. I'm just going to accept it. And that's the way it is. And then like my parents will always um, like question me. Oh, I don't get this. Like, why is he like that? And I'm like, well, you guys were like this when he was growing up. Like, do you ever think about that? But um, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked with the chat popping up and trying to keep on um, with what I'm talking. Sorry. Um, And I just see Amanda like (laughs) hysterically laughing, Um, but I love it. I love it. Um, But uh, yeah, just uh, I can't remember where I was going with this now. I'm happy to pass it on to Jay. Okay. Thanks, Maddie. You're going to pass it right on to me. Okay. Throw me right in the fire. Thank you. That's what it's all about, right? You know, that fear or whatever when we're when we're feeling that. That's kind of how it is. And uh, I, I remember when I first started listening to the show, I, I signed up for Beyond Belief uh, way, way back, the workshop. And uh, I was very new to it, and I didn't even know what the heck was going on, really, honestly. Um, and I think I was, like, almost like – I don't even think I talked – the whole thing. I think it was like a two hour workshop day one that I was in. And I don't remember even talking in the video. <laughs> it was pretty crazy because I just was so uh, in the feels about how I might come across on video and everything, you know, it's a different experience. And, um, but I really was feeling that fear, you know, but, um, and uh, that's not the case today. Uh, thank you, Maddie. <laughs> um, I don't have, you know, Actually, I was thinking along the lines of dysphoria and stuff like that too. And and um, when well, I was when I'm younger, you know, when we're when we're younger, we're kind of conditioned into these things in a way. You know, it's like we're learning. Okay, this is blue. Oh, that's blue. Thanks. All right. And this is the number three. Oh, that's number three. Great. Thanks. And you're a boy. Oh, I'm a boy. Great. And th- these are all like facts. You know that we accept as truth because that's what people are telling us, right? And so when we go on in life, say and and you've got uh, a feeling that that's not what you are, then it's going to cause a lot of struggle. I can only imagine. And for me, in my case, my, my feeling was that I was just not 
with the world. Like I was very much separate. Um, am I on? Am I even on? Oh yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, so I was very much separate and, um, <laughs> I lost a train of thought now. The laughing cracked me up. Uh, where was I at with that? But that is a dysphoria in itself, I think, you know, just the idea that I'm this and not that, you know, uh, a lot of events happened and I, I was uh, quite sad for a long time as a kid. And I thought that was just going to be the way it is. Like, I'm just a sad person. Like, life's just not fair to me. Like, maybe there's just something wrong with me. You know, I, I don't belong here. All these things that a depressed person might think. And that became like my identity. That became my my uh, gender, if you will, you know what I mean? In that, in that kind of respect. And I, I, I so identified with that, you know, and then I had to kind of face that. And then uh, in any way that we can identify, it all kind of comes down to the same thing. I think once we, once we can face that fear and just walk anyways, go through it, um, then it, it then it kind of settles off. And uh, I hope you feel that way now too. You should, uh, because um, we're all, you know, just, we're all just us. We're all just being, you know, it doesn't have to be I'm um, this or that, you know, and uh, I love you too, Jazz, and I love everybody here, honestly. So thanks. That's all I've got. Love you too, man. And and that's just the, the ability to just to, to even step into something without any regard for how it's going to go or how it's going to be heard. Because anytime we step into something with an idea of how it should sound or how it should be is this false fucking certainty that we know what the best thing to say, the best response to have the right thing to say, the correct way to say it, the correct way to sound and you stepping into something without any idea of what the fuck you're going to say versus you stepping into something with some idea of what you're going to say. And then saying that thing is equally as uncertain with how it's going to be perceived. It's just you that you're satisfying. It's just your certainty that this thing that I've come up with is the best thing to say is the correct thing to say, as opposed to just stepping up and being like, I got nothing, but here we go. Find out like they're equal. They're equally as appropriate, no matter what is ever said. And that's kind of freedom. And, and I appreciate your insights that you just share. Cause now I'm getting hit with this. Like, Holy fuck it. They're, they're equatable that, that desire to to know what to say versus the willingness to step into something without an idea of what to say. They're equally as able to be perceived by anyone in any way. Like it's just my desire to know what the right thing to say is. And then I hold on to it and I'm like, shit, I totally forgot what I was going to say. It's like this assumption that what I was going to say was the best thing to say when, when you don't know that. And so if it goes, whatever comes saying that is just as appropriate as anything else and has an equal ability to be perceived by someone because everything we say is perceived differently by everyone that we're interacting with. And I'm now realizing that the, the chat popping up, I'm like, as I'm typing just earlier in the episode, I was like, oh, that could, that could be distracting the chat popping up. And then I was like, ah, fuck it, whatever, we'll, we'll get to do it. And now it's like, it pops up and I'm like, yeah, I totally forgot what I, where I was going, even though exactly what I was saying was the recognition that you don't have to know where you're going and you can lose track of what you're going to say, forget what you're going to say and just step up and say something. And as long as, you just keep saying stuff. There's an equal opportunity for it to be perceived or resonated with by, by anyone. And it's the willingness to let go of the certainty that what you think is the best thing to say is the best thing to say. Could be better off forgetting what you're going to say and then saying whatever the fuck comes out, whatever you're able to pull out of your ass in the moment. It's like, bleh, just vomit that stuff out. There's just as good of a chance. And oftentimes that is where that, you know, connection is, is found is through whatever comes out when you're not trying to come up with the right thing to say. Well, well, we are all floundering around talking about what not, uh, what not to say or not knowing what to say. Uh, somebody actually asked a question about what do we mean by retreat in the Netherlands? And so I just wanted to take a quick moment and say uh, a dualistic unity retreat is not your typical 
mindfulness or wellness retreat. Uh, it is quite literally a retreat from the need to be fucking anything. And, and so it really is an opportunity for you to just be yourself, practice authenticity, vulnerability, not worry about judgment because you're not judging anybody else and to be in an environment with a bunch of other people who are doing the very same thing. Now I say that and I caution whoever is listening to at least be familiar with the podcast. Do check out season one, season two, get into the groups if you can before you come to one of these retreats because it's important that you walk into this conversation understanding that it's not what you likely think it, to, it is. If this is not something you're familiar with as a conversation or as a podcast, then it really helps to go back to season one and season two and understand this is not philosophy. This is not spirituality. This is not self-help. This is not any of those things. And so the retreat is not like anything that you've ever been to. There is no structure per se. You're not going to go there and have a, a list of things that you get to do throughout the day from hour to hour to hour. To, it's just you, which is really what it should be the entire time. Your relationship with yourself. And you can spend some time by yourself. You can take a walk along this or, or around this giant property. You can go sit in the hot tub or you can have a really interesting conversation with somebody who is doing their own work, their own introspection. And so these retreats are really a lot of fun. Uh, we also have a potential retreat coming up at the be beginning of October in Vancouver. That's a mini retreat. Uh, that's only four days from Thursday uh, afternoon until Monday morning. So if you're interested in that, I will throw up the QR code here uh, in a second. There it is. So you can also go to dualisticunity.com slash Vancouver. But uh, we actually have three people in the room right now who have been to a retreat. So, and, and and not just a mini retreat, but actually the long full nine day retreat, which is what we're going to be having in, uh, in the Netherlands in November. So uh, since we are, you know, talking about authenticity and just kind of shooting from the hip, who would like to shoot from the hip and talk about their retreat experience first? Jess. Yeah, sure. Um, as you were talking, Ray, I was thinking about how during the retreats, it's felt so much like I. it's so easy to be myself because it feels like there are no expectations of me. And it feels like it's one of the few places I've experienced where people, in my life at least, um, people um, don't need you to be anything. They're just there. They're just there. <laughs> That's it. That period. <laughs> that's all that's all that we know and then we just move from there and then do whatever we do from there and we have no idea what we'll do where we'll go how we'll hang out who like what the conversations will be like but it's always so much fun stepping into that uncertainty with people who are also willing to step into that uncertainty because then you get to be so creative with your expression and that's kind of what i've been enjoying about the, like letting go of this um identity of a woman is that it's been so exciting to see the entire rainbow and so when i am like going out on, on a walk now i will notice um like shrubs of blackberries which i didn't ever notice before but um on the newest vancouver re re vancouver retreat we were picking off um, blackberries from nearby uh, places in the neighborhood and uh, we, like it was so cool that how that I was noticing these things now and today I was on a run as well and I just started lizarding <laughs> on um, a bunch of rocks <laughs> like what like after after my run and I never would have even like thought to do that before but it's that state of relaxation and letting go and realizing that you can you can do it and just like relax into it has been really nice because the the retreats I feel like have been a really cool place for me to see that North Star thing where it's like it shows me what is possible and and then I can come back to my life like here um, where, where I'm living and then see what um, how I can incorporate those learnings because and the more the more I've been to like a few retreats now like four I think like one one full retreat and three mini retreats. And after every retreat, I feel like there's so much that I learned that I incorporate into my life that it feels like my life feels like a retreat more and more. Like I'll be with my parents hanging out. And before before any of the retreats, we were just like, I, I wouldn't hang out. I wasn't hanging out with them. 
and um, there was just so much going on there. <laughs> and I literally wasn't like for my birthday, I literally didn't go because there was so much drama that was happening. And now it's like I'm spending so much, so, so much time with them, like all the time. And it's so much fun because I'm not holding on to any of their expectations and just being myself and not feeling like they need to be anything either. And it's providing so much room for growth for all of us. So it's feeling like, my like my time with my parents feel like a different kind of retreat as well that it never used to feel like before and so it's really nice to learn and grow from amazing the the amazing kind of environment that's created at the du retreats thank you jazz we really appreciate you sharing that and it's it's great to have you at these retreats because each and every time we've seen you, you've been an entirely different version of you more and more yourself each and every time. And, and, and specifically I'm talking about karaoke. You know, I, I know between the first karaoke to the last karaoke that there was definitely an alignment with just fucking doing it, just dancing. And it was fucking beautiful to see. And so, uh, who would like to go next, Maddie or Amanda? All right, Maddie, do it up. Oh, you're pointing at Amanda. Yeah. I'm like, I thought it was like right here, right here. No, no, right you're now, pointing at Amanda who's right below now. you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Amanda. That's right. Into thine fire I shall go. <laughs> I'm really having too much fun slaughtering medieval talk because I know that I'm saying all of it wrong with 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 no regard. There's no my my treachery knows no bounds. <laughs> um but but uh, to get back on thine topic, the retreat. <laughs> it is unlike anything I have ever been to. And um, I love a good adventure. I love going out. I take myself to do things like check out amusement parks, check out uh, attractions, hike up mountains, hugging 2000 year old trees. Like I, I, I get to the round it, you know. <laughs> Again, again, we're just doing it. We're just saying things like this just because fuck it. Um, but but truly, though, the the nine day retreats are very different than the mini retreats, because the mini retreats, although it does feel like we're together for a lot longer than three to four days, like the nine days felt like I was with this group for like a year. And it only felt like a year because to me, it had that same fullness. And I remember Jazz is the one who asked the question during the the April 2023 retreat in Vancouver Island and it's towards the end of the retreat. And she's like, you know, how long did it feel like for you guys? And I'm like a year at bare minimum. And it was just because it, it had that same fullness, you know, the, the amount of things, the amount of interactions, conversations, memories made of uh, moments laughing on the floor to the point of tears. Like it, like the, the amount of things that I on average in my head would, would experience in a year is what it felt like in the nine day retreat. And it just was because everybody was so present. And even after the, I think the Vancouver retreat that was in, that was just last month, um, I had a, a 24 hour period afterwards that felt like two days. And it was only because we were, we were, you know, I was so present. And so everything that was around me felt like it was stretched. And when you're at these retreats, everybody is there. No one is thinking, and even if they think about it for a moment, nobody's really thinking about home. People weren't on their phones. People weren't trying to watch TV or watch movies or people were there. They wanted to talk. They wanted to share. They wanted to just go for a walk. And so um, when I had a friend ask me about the retreat and I'm telling the friend, I'm like, you know, the point is the people because the friend wanted to maybe go on an adventure outside of uh, outside of the Netherlands retreat, like, oh, the Van Gogh, the Van Gogh Museum is going to be right there. And I'm like, I don't think you get it. Like hanging out with all of you is the point. Like going to these retreats to be there, to share presence, to, to that is the whole goal. Like it's not there is no itinerary other than like be here. That's it. That's the whole itinerary. Sometimes be here looks like walking. Sometimes be here looks like eating together at a, t at a table. But the only, the only objective is to just be there and not to be thinking that you want to be anywhere else, which is so common. And so 
when I when I tell people about the retreats, I'm like, make sure when you're going, you're going for you. Because if you bring a partner, if you bring a friend, if you bring someone, they tend to want to bring the history with you. And so I told this friend, I was like, I'm not going as your friend. I'm not even going as Amanda. I'm just going because I want to go and I want to let go of everything. So if you want to go, make sure you're going for you because I'm not going to be there to hold your hand or to make you feel better. Like my, my job is not to make my friends feel better. So make sure you're not going for that because you're not going to get it. So it's not for sale. Do not try to buy it. Make sure that you're going, you're going because you want to do it for yourself. And it's a great practice for when you leave the retreat, you take that with you. And so I, I have moments where I can feel myself back at the retreat. I can hear certain jokes or certain conversations that I maybe wasn't a part of, but I got to listen to certain scenes I got to walk in on certain doodles that I got to draw, like certain walks we went on. Like you take that with you because rarely are you so present that you can soak it in. And so it's amazing that once you leave that retreat, you realize that you always had that ability, that you always could be present, that you always could absorb as much as, as much as you could, could, to digest and and be open to and so it's not that when i leave the retreats things got easier it's that i stopped fighting i stopped resisting and i finally admitted to myself that i was the wall that prevented me from engaging my day-to-day -day life as 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 fully as i allowed myself to at the retreats and so everyone gets to co-create that space with us but if you really wanted to you can spend your retreat locked up in a room waiting for somebody to save you but if you're looking to be a princess in a tower, just realize that the dragon's also in there too. And you can do that both at the retreat and at home. So you make sure when you're coming to these retreats that you're coming to enjoy the experience and to enjoy the step that you pay to be on. So just keep that in mind that the retreat is not really a retreat. It's, it's what you make of it like it's always been. And so being around people that take that a little more openly kind of kind of burst your own bubble almost proves you wrong that like oh no I can't do that or I can't do that with strangers it's like no you can and when you see other people at the retreat doing it you're like oh shit that looks that looks like a good time and it's super welcoming and you don't need to be invited it's because it's always available it's just you that puts up your hands and says no I that's not that doesn't make sense and it's like, there are plenty of things that don't make sense, but you, you experience them anyways. And so I encourage, I encourage people to come to the retreats, especially the nine days, because there's, there's something, there's something really magical about being able to spend that much time, not experiencing time, just being in the moment with other people who want nothing from you, who do not want to convince you, who are not trying to make you feel better, but they're also not asking that of you. And so it felt incredibly freeing to be able to do anything just because I chose to and to be able to receive something because I knew that the other people at the retreat weren't doing it to make me, to convince me they were a nice person. They were just doing it because they felt like choosing that option in that moment, given the circumstances. And so I felt more loved, more open to love, more easily able to share and connect than I did at the retreats. And not because it became easier, but because I stopped thinking it was impossible. Well said, beautifully said. Thank you for sharing that, Amanda. Cause it's, and, and one of the biggest things I've taken away, and this is just for, for me, like speaking from my own experience as always, cause like these retreats for me are fucking experiences as much as anyone else. I am at this retreat involved in it. You may think you're coming to, you know, see me be something if I'm just, fucking maintaining my own idea of what i should or shouldn't be but it's a it's a safe spot for you to question your own assumptions about yourself and use it as as a testing ground because the assumptions about ourselves the, the the things that we think keep us safe the story we tell ourselves it's oftentimes very difficult to question it we don't see feel safe to question that to act differently when we're surrounded by people who are reinforcing that story, who are trying, doing everything they can to confirm that story. When you're surrounded by a bunch of people who are letting go of the certainty they have about themselves, they're also going to be letting go of the certainty they have about you, their idea of you. And so there's an opportunity in a spot like that to 
test the waters. That's that's not necessarily an easy place to find. There's not necessarily many places that don't see you as something that want you to be something that want you to 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 stay in the way that you've always been. And so it's a it's a spot in which you can test that out. And you realize that the only discomforts you're experiencing are your own. The only judgments you're experiencing are your own judgments about yourself. And if you're willing to take responsibility for those judgments because you're just left with yourself, because there isn't anyone there judging you, then you're able to change. Then you're able to shift that. You're finally able to see, oh, it's always just been my own judgments. I've been able to pass it off to other people because there maybe are certain perceptions in a lot of different areas about you that other people are maintaining be just because they're trying to maintain their own ideas. But when you're left with yourself, you either have the opportunity to take responsibility for those things and make change and feel a little bit more free because you realize that it always just comes down to you or you, know, you can run from that. You can shy away. You can stay in your room the whole time. There's nothing wrong with either of them, but the opportunity is there and, and there's an, a, an ability to have an experience like that that is pretty fucking rare, honestly. I think it's incredibly rare to be able to to be in a spot in which you're able to see that the only judgments that you you feel are your own. We don't get the space to realize that. These retreats give you the space to realize that, which allows you to drop them, which which allows you to see that that it's just you hindering yourself. It's just you that's cutting thee off from thine potential, <laughs> as they say. It's just fucking you getting in the way of, of what you could be if you stopped trying to be something for someone, which is just for you. And, and that feeling of, of certainty and safety that comes from being the thing or trying to be the thing that you've always tried to be to keep your own potential, your own self at bay. But, uh, Maddie, would you like to share? I think Amanda pretty much wrapped it up nice and neatly, but, um, I was thinking how the retreats are kind of like a massage, like the many retreats are like a 30 minute massage or a, 30, a 60 minute massage. And the full nine day retreats are like a uh, um, 130 minute, well, yeah, 30 minute massage. Wait, no, 90 minute massage, sorry, mass. Um, but uh, yeah, like the longer you're there for, the more you're, the more relaxing that you can do and the more you'll be able to reap the benefits that a retreat can bring. And it's not that like, you show up to this retreat and all of this stuff's going to happen. No, you still have to input into the retreat. Like you get out what you put in. Um, but it really is just a space to, um, to be around other people who are working on themselves as well and uh, trying to, or letting go of themselves, not trying to, but letting go of themselves and, realizing and recognizing that it's not the truth of what they are and that um just uh I feel that by being around a group of people who are also um doing the same thing it's uh we can put down that worry of how other people might be perceiving us or those judgments and just recognizing that it's all coming from us like you're always thinking about it it's not actually happening like no one's actually saying those things to you most of the time but it's just coming from you and just seeing those familiar faces it sort of reinforces it like if you're continuously going through but going to the retreat being in a new setting environment in a new space just feeling like new this whole new energy of like it feels really light and then you feel that you can drop your weight as well and rise up and 
be with everybody else and then we all just rise each other up and um if one of us is like going through something we can all feel it and it's not like you know uh we don't have this uh uh we leave no man behind like we will be with that person like um with amanda at one of the retreats amanda was going through something and we were all there for her we were all with her and we we all needed to be there for her because she was bringing us into it like whether we like wanted to go it like um whether we wanted to be dragged into it or not and um yeah we were just all there and it was just such a big family and there was just so much love and i had never felt so free like in my life um and it really is a um <laughs> it's it's a reward it's like welcome you have arrived like this is your reward now just be just enjoy and bask in this amazing moment like you we just it's so beautiful because everything is like there for you um we have this amazing location we get to go on these beautiful walks together and they're so peaceful and enjoyable like even if you're not even saying anything like even if you're not inputting in the conversation it is just so beautiful to be there and just to be with all of these amazing people who or ex um, versions of you like it's just incredible to feel that you don't have to prove or be anything to anyone else like not even for yourself you just are you're just feeling everything that you are and you're just really being with yourself there really is no worry um there's like there's barely any thought like um by the second day like you're there's there's or the thought is just kind of gone like or you're not even paying attention to it it's there but like there is none of this concern of like how is this person like thinking of me or fuck like did I do the wrong thing there's like none of that you're just finding out more of who you who you are or just you're learning to express yourself in different ways and it like i highly recommend going to a retreat like it is life-changing um because yeah it like it shows you um the potential that you have and like the possi the just that you don't have to live this way the whole way that you've been living you don't have to live like that anymore and when you go back home it just feels everything feels new and it just yeah like um what for what the retreat did for me it helped me show that i am like i am worthy of love and i can love myself and yeah just learning to accept love in like all forms of love as well even the love that we perceive to be harsh but like um yeah it just it gave me an opening to um basically to end my relationship because I could see that it needed to end but I was just so scared of actually doing going through it because I didn't think that I could do it I had held on to it for so long and then when I was at the retreat and had all of this space to be me and just to be around just different people just different energies um I knew like okay, I'm a lot happier than without being in the relationship or without thinking about it. And it was hard when I went home because I felt like I had all of this energy behind me and I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then there was the, um, like I had finally gotten a reaction that I had never gotten before when I went to break up. Um, and then I kind of just, fell back into that comfort and was like yeah okay just 
going back into old patterns. And then I was just, I wasn't like, I was unhappy and I could just tell like, yeah, no, the thing that I wanted to do before was the right decision for me. And I've just kind of lent back into this because it's what was familiar and it was just easier than moving forward. Um, but I also needed to come to that decision myself. Like I couldn't do it for anybody else but me. And when I was ready to fully accept that and accept that, right, are we going to make this decision and stick by it? Then, yeah. Um, but the retreats are so, they're just, they're breathtaking. They're so much fun. It's like all vibes accepted. Like we have moments where we're all chill and we're just like, enjoying like the peace and love and then we have times where we're all like energetic and ecstatic and like we're running around and just like saying weird silly stuff and having medieval times and playing pool and doing karaoke and I think the karaoke is like it's one of my favorite things yeah just watching everyone come out and like really going for it not caring about like how they sound like no one else is like caring about how they sound. We're all just excited that you're up there doing it. And it's just like, we don't care. Like there is no expectation of, there's no comparison of like, Oh, like of this is better. This is worse. Or there's just none of that. It's like, we're all just accepting it for as it is. And yeah. Thank you, Maddie. That's awesome. I look forward to seeing you at the next retreat that you can make it to, because it's always nice to, to come back together, especially after we haven't seen somebody in a little, in a little while. And uh, Jay, I know you didn't get to pitch in, but you will soon because you are coming to a retreat in the very near future too retreats actually so we are three so we are going to get to hang out a lot over the next six months or so so i'm very very excited about that i do want to remind everybody if you would like to join us in vancouver from october 5th to october 9th do go to dualisticunity.com slash vancouver and just fill in your information let us know you're interested and then we'll let you know if that event is happening otherwise definitely check out the Netherlands retreat. You can find the information on our website. There are still tickets left. There are only a few tickets left for the third floor shared accommodations. Those are the least expensive tickets. Uh, do keep in mind that all of your tickets do and cover all of your food, all of your substances, the entertainment, the group yoga, stuff like that. Um, and there are semi-private rooms still available, which means that there are two single beds in each of those rooms. Each room has its own bathroom and its own shower. So that's just wonderful, in my opinion. I don't know if anybody has ever tried to cram a dozen or so people into sharing one bathroom, but it's ugly. It's a nightmare. Nobody wants to go through that. And so we're not. We are uh, We're going to be enjoying the hell out of our time. We're all going to have our privacy if we need it. We'll have our space to just sit and process whatever it is our, that we're processing. Or we can all get together and have a great fucking time. So if you can make it, definitely do. If you have any questions, reach out to us. You can reach us, uh, of course, on Patreon. Uh, social media is a little bit more difficult or better yet, go to our community discord and you can, you can connect with us there. There's actually a retreat plans channel that you can go to and ask your questions. And you sometimes you'll find answers there or you'll find answers from other community members who are already going. And if you don't want to reach out to us on any of those spots, you can just join our free group chat that we do every Wednesday that we happen to be doing tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can sign up on dualsecurity.com under, I believe, the events section or in my bio. If you're on social media right now, TikTok, Instagram, it's uh, super easy to access, totally free. You just got to throw your email in there because there are a limited number of spots. So we are nothing if not available. And if you have any questions, you can reach us directly almost any day because we're on group chats we're doing live streams we're doing all those things and and are always available so if you have any questions we haven't gotten back to you if you sent us a dm or something on instagram and you're like i sent that to you two years ago and you still haven't responded i apologize but there is a way to access us directly at any at any point at any time so hop in a group we do them every wednesday we do the patreon ones five days a week so uh, definitely hop in there if you got any questions about the retreat specifically or anything in general, um, you can ask us directly. Now, I'm glad you brought this up in closing because I think it's really important. And it's something that somebody had mentioned on our episode of Dualistic Unity Social um, 
earlier when we were on Instagram, you know, like you guys are spreading such great wisdom. Uh, I think they said Dharma. And uh, how do you reconcile charging for it? And, and I just wanted to ask, like, anybody charge you to be here? I think you're forgetting how Instagram works, or at least maybe you're, you're confused as to how Instagram works. It's free. It's free. Um, that said, we, we really do try and do as much as we can for free, as often as possible. We try to be here for groups. We try to be here for, for live streams and everything else. And if you can ask a question in those, we, we try to answer as best we can. Sometimes, though, I do receive messages from people who are, frankly, explaining something that's really quite complex and then asking for a response via social media. And as much as I would love to be able to do that, and indeed, I was able to do that when we first started the podcast. The fact is, is that we're so busy right now, like just the amount of hours that we put into being ex accessible and available to our community takes up a lot. I'm a dad and, and we've got to run this business and, and there's a lot that we're, we're doing in terms of expansion and whatnot. So I just wanted to say that if you're, if you're looking to get a complex answer to your complex problem, I'm not going to be available available to do that just over a DM on Instagram, and neither is Andrew more often than not. If it's a, co a comment like, hey, great job, thanks so much, or, or you know, where do I find the details about this event? We can do that. That's no problem. But if you're contacting me asking about your abusive relationship or, or your loss of custody over your child or an addiction that you're going through, I, I can't express this enough. I can't offer you anything over direct message on Instagram or TikTok. There's very little that I can do that's not going to take a lot of time and still be limited in the form of the response itself. So if you are interested in talking to me, you can do so. You can book a one-on-one -on -one appointment through our website, dualisticunity.com. I, I don't have a great deal of availability, but what I'm saying is that for the complexity of your question, give it the time that it requires to get the answer that you're looking for, or at least to be able to, to go through it together. Okay, you can't just expect an answer that's going to give you something to run with when there is so much nuance, there is so much gray area, and there's so much room for misinterpretation. So I wish I could be there for you as easily as that. Unfortunately, I can't be, but we are here all the time. Join a group, jump on a live stream, leave a comment with your question. We definitely can do what we can so that way you don't have to pay, but I'm just saying that that's all we can do. So I'm not going to apologize, but I, it does kind of suck. I wish I had all the infinite time in the world. We have about two minutes left. Jay, I believe you had your hand raised. Do you want to wrap us up? Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I was just going to chime in on the retreats anyways and and just say how excited I am to, to come, especially to the nine-day retreat. You know, I had already um, purchased the... Uh, Virginia retreat previously, as well as the Vermont one. And uh, I, I just couldn't miss it. You know, there's just going to be so many of us there just letting go and um, without, you know, judgment and not trying to not trying to get anything or any, anything from it necessarily, just uh, being an experience and picking up what we can, I guess. And um, I don't know what to expect, but I'm really excited. I'm really excited to meet you all in person, give you a big hug. Cannot wait. That's all. Yeah, likewise, I am excited. It, it's so nice when we all get together. And it's funny because by like the second day, we all start to recognize that, that we all know each other, not in our stories or anything else, but just in our shared experience of being alive, of existing and being uncertain, peeling back the layers and recognizing that what remains is is us in this together. So it's a fantastic experience. Um, this is the end of today's roundtable. Fuck, I love these. If you would like to join us for the next roundtable, it will be happening in two weeks' time. Uh, you can do so. Oh, oh, yes, it will be happening in two weeks' time. I will be back by then after the Vermont retreat. So join us on Patreon, patreon.com slash dualisticunity. You can be a tier two patron or up. There is a seven-day free trial if you're not sure. If you'd like to be a patron or not, jump on there. I promise you, you'll love it. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you soon.